process was started about 30 years ago by a judge in Seattle. And uh, it is intended uh, and the hope for Marin CASA is that every child who's in the juvenile dependency system, uh, in the probation system, um, even the probate system, that they be assigned a CASA. They're the voice in the courtroom. Their responsibility is to look at everything that um, affects that child in their life and make sure that that child is in a safe environment. In the end, it's to help write a report to present to the judge to let the judge know what is in the best interest of the child. And I'm gonna give you an example. I'm in court and I'm getting a report from a social worker. This social worker has a large caseload and they've interviewed the children perhaps and they've interviewed the parents and they've looked at records. Then I look at the CASA report and the CASA report will tell me, I've spent 126 hours with this child or I've been with this child for 18 months. I can't get that kind of information anywhere else. And it is almost as if it allows me you know, to have that kind of experience. So not only are they communicating a wealth of information to the court, but they're also creating a relationship with the child and, and a role model for the child that that child otherwise is not going to have. It provides at least one adult in a kid's life who is present, reliable, and is truly looking out for their best interests. And when you have something like that, you feel safe and you feel confident, and you have the ability to go out and make productive decisions for your life. It was in November of last year that it became clear there was a problem with the CASA program. It also became clear that it couldn't go on the way that it was. When Judge Wood pulled the program, first week in January, we met with the judge. I gave her a three-page business plan. I said, we know what has to be done. We will get it done. She said, how long will it be? Probably about six months. And I said, no, I think we can do it sooner. We got our approval for 501c3 status to be a nonprofit organization in less than 30 days. I am told that nobody has ever seen that happen before. When you give that kind of a response, it sets a tone. And uh, that's what she did through the entire process. We wanted to work really hard as a new board. We had, let's face it, unbelievable opportunity. When you're new, you get to take, take the best of everything out of the older program and make it better. When I found out about the new startup of an entirely new CASA program and board and everything, I definitely knew there was work to be done. And you just, you don't say no to Susan. That's just one thing that everybody says, you don't say no to Susan. The CASA volunteers have been the most amazing piece of this whole thing. Because they're the ones also who reached out to the community and said, this program needs help. Because these kids are gonna be left without an advocate. Marin Casa would not exist without the support of the Marin Community Foundation, Hans Bridget Law Firm, Yoga Bear Computer Repair. The list just goes on. What I need to say about Casa and Susan is thank you. Thank you for everything that you've done and thank you for making it so important to continue this journey for other kids who are in my position.